Computex is one of the biggest tech conferences of the year. It's my first time going and I'm very excited to be here. Although the event is a bit different to what I was expecting. There seems to be two distinct sides to Computex. The first one is the glamorous side, which I use the word glamorous, trying real hard not to dry heave over it. Uh, but you know, it's, it's the part we normally see. All of the fancy new product announcements, crazy custom builds, and a whole bunch of ladies carrying RAM for some reason. But then there's the equally massive random crap side, which you don't normally get to see. There's so many booths showing off like McDonald's plastics and server rack mounting brackets and a mouse shaped like a like a lady garden. I, I almost feel like I need to censor that, to be honest. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at both sides of the comic. Now with Computex, not all the companies have their presentations at the massive exhibition hall. A bunch of them present in hotel rooms scattered across Taipei, so we decided to start our journey at the Corsair suite, who very kindly flew us out and housed us at Computex. Corsair announced a new IQ ecosystem with a new hub and connector that can carry data and power. And that combined with daisy chainable fans means you can connect a whole bunch of RGB crap up with very few cables. Which has the added benefit of you only needing to screw one of three fans down. Look at that. So I'm sure this will all add up to much less cable shouting, which is good. Now unfortunately it does use a proprietary connector, but considering what it's doing, I guess it makes sense? And Corsair was saying that these cables can carry an obscene amount of power. Corsair also announced some new Hydro X stuff with this IQ integration, which looks awesome, but I'm more excited about the fancy new DOM plats with interchangeable tops. You can go between like an RGB bit or a heatsink, or you can 3D print your own design, which is a really good idea. And with that, thanks again Corsair for sending us over to Computex. Next, we meandered over to the Kingston booth who had quite the presentation. They spent a while showing off their very impressive looking server memory configurations. That is a lot of RAM. And aside from dozens of USB drives, SD cards, and these little guys, they also showed off their new Fury RAM in a crazy gaming build. They also had this cool cylinder built to show off the doubling of LEDs in the RAM heat spreader. But it didn't take very long. We then hopped in a cab and powered across Taipei to Deepcool's booth where they showed off their massive new 420mm AIO. Look at that! Deepcool also showed off their classily RGBified new AK coolers and the Morpheus case, a behemoth of a case that supports up to three 420mm radiators depending on the modular power supply configuration. And it just generally comes with airflow up the butt. They also had some power supplies lying around with PCIe 5 power and the Assassin 4 cooler, which has an ingenious solution to the middle fan mounting. You don't have to struggle with those stupid little clips anymore, it just kind of slides in place like that. Uh, way better. And with deep cool done and dusted, we were ready to head to the main hall. But at this point, we'd already spent hours having companies bombard us with product names, numbers, and all kinds of things. So after a brief meltdown, we decided to save the main event for day two. As day two rolled around, so did a typhoon. And once we entered the main convention center, it quickly became clear that there were two distinct ecosystems, the big popular brands at the center and a bunch of smaller vendors vying for attention around the periphery, which I found mesmerizing. There was tech stuff everywhere. Here we've got some, some tech stuff happening. That's some serious looking tech stuff. Oh, here's another power supply brand that I'm going to find in a pre-built at some point and have never heard of them before. There's Anna in front of some tech stuff. If you want some PCIe connectors. It also quickly became clear there was some kind of unsaid rule that meant every time you started filming, somebody had to walk across the shot. It was uncanny. Even if you waited for a clearing, the moment you pressed record, somebody would just materialize in front of you. Another thing that quickly became clear was that Computex was hot for AI this year. And I may have found probably the smartest one I've ever seen. Although apparently even a genius AI struggles at the hands of a baboon. I, I just pressed the button, okay. Okay. What is? Oh, oh. Maybe try again. Press. I am You posed a great question. Oh. 
Oh, so I press release and then talk? Oh, okay. After my first attempt failed, the AI lashed out with brutal sarcasm. Your question has sparked curiosity and engagement among your audience. Oh. It shows your intelligence and creativity. But despite clear tutelage, the button remained a challenge. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm not very good with tech stuff. Maybe try again. Okay. Maybe you can try yourself. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, I, it's all my fault. I'm... But after my second failed attempt, the AI resorted to pity. Take a deep breath and try to find solutions instead. She doesn't of want me to blame it. myself, which is very nice. She's very kind. Yeah. Yeah. But once I mastered the button, it was time to ask the most important question I could think of. What is the worst kind of computer venereal disease? This is a complex question. It Please is. give me it some time to question. analyze it. The worst kind of computer venereal disease is the one that not only infects your system, but also steals your personal information and compromises your cybersecurity. That's a very good answer. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. With great pride having mastered the button, we headed to Be Quiet's booth, who had one of the most exciting products of the show, the Darkbase Pro 901. A gigantic case with insane features like an invertible motherboard tray, a magnetic GPU stand slash cable hider, and USB ports that light up. But all of that pales in comparison to a hidden five and a quarter inch DVD drive slot and space for actual hard drives. Oh, and I almost forgot, the removable radiator mounts have fan hubs built in, which will make fan installation so much easier. And aside from that, they had like power supplies and other cases and stuff. Which was all exciting, don't get me wrong, but pales in comparison to the 901. Next, Patriot gave us a very informative look around their memory products, showing off a new high tier overclocking RAM kit, which Patriot said I was too much of a noob to use, which fair enough. The Extreme 5 kit can go up to 8,000 megahertz, but it needs a motherboard with just one RAM slot per memory channel to hit these speeds because of memory architecture reasons. They also had some insanely fast SSDs with active cooling in it. The fan was very quiet and according to Patriot is built using fancy plastic composites which means it'll never break apparently. So after another near fatal dose of having increasingly ridiculous numbers set at us, we decided to look for some more random crap, which led us to a weird MSI booth that seemed to specialize in robot car charging arms, which worked very well. Next to that man's back is a hologram, some printer based tech stuff. Behind that man's back is an airplane shaped PC. Mm. And right after Anna very excitedly discovered the vagina mouse, we stumbled onto another live demonstration. Oh, I see, and then you... After clearly being highly impressed by the grip tracking, my mind went to its default place. So do you have uh, like, a, like a game or something we can try like this? And we also have a game that is paper, scissors, stop. stop. Oh, okay, can I try that? Strapping into the second glove was such an overwhelming experience, it took me a second to catch on. And you can try this. Get ready. Oh, oh, it's rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, okay, okay, I understand. So I have to... Get ready. Oh, <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh, okay, I see. Oh. With that, I was all gamed out, so we decided to continue our search, leading us to Cooler Master's obscene egg chair thing, which left me so frazzled my vocabulary completely broke down. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But nothing could prepare me for what came next. H how much does it cost? 15,000, oh, okay, okay. I don't know, $15,000 feels a bit steep for a glorified chair, especially considering the majority of the features on it barely worked. And that, combined with the sneaker PCs, was just too much for me. I needed another lie down. Uh... Inwin's booth was next with a very creative modular case system where you could build up from a normal ATX sized case to a Borg cube of gaming death. 
They also had this very colorful foldable case design meant to attract the kiddos to PC building. Inwin is really creative with their new case designs, which is fun to see. And I really love their flat pack case shipping idea. But then on the other end of the spectrum, there were some companies that may have borrowed some ideas. Like here we have a definitely not a height case. And the blank space on the front of this case happens to be the same shape as the MSI shield. What a fun coincidence. And my final goal at Computex was to find some new pre-built designs, which were quite rare at the event, but there were a couple of options from Asus and Acer, both of which just seemed like evolutions of previous designs, but with airflow on the front, which is definitely trending in the correct direction. Which is great, but the interiors still look like a 17 year old office PC, so there's that. All in all, my first trip to Computex was quite the experience, from gold RAM to people showing off Fisher Price versions of PS3 controllers for some reason, to an RGB mug that keeps your drink warm and flashes red every hour to remind you to hydrate, it seems like the event had it all. But after the surgical VR booth traumatized both of us with extremely graphic footage of open heart surgery, I think I've had my fill of the event for a while. Thank you for watching, and thank you Corsair for sending us out, and until the next video, bye bye.